Hi, I'm Valerie Mann. I'm here with another crafts during COVID video, uh, though today it's more art geared because I had a viewer request a demo on watercolor for her kids. So um, I am a watercolor artist and that is great. I am the perfect person to show you how to use them. So um, we're going to start out with some just little talks about materials doing watercolors. Um, a lot of times schools don't have a great budget to get really nice supplies and so kids will have pretty unsatisfying experiences with watercolor because they just don't have the watercolors that schools can buy don't have a lot of pigment in them. Um, Prang I know used to make a really great pan of water, or watercolors. This is called a you know your watercolor set with your pans in it. Um, this is I think Rama is the name of this one. Um, Yarka also makes a decent watercolor set. Um, and watercolors are by nature transparent. You might see some sets that say opaque, but that's not actually watercolor. It has some chalk into it, in it to make it um, opaque. Um, but watercolors usually, you know, you once you paint over the paper, there's not going to be any white left. So you leave highlights by leaving the lighter colors underneath. Um, but we'll get into that later. Uh, first, we're going to start with this is a really nice brand new set. Um, and when you open your set and look at it like this, that's the best it's ever going to look. And don't get upset or stressed out if your kid gets their stuff all stirred up because that means they're using it, which is great. Um, here is a set that I had that's a lot like the first set, but this one's been used a lot. Um, so we're going to use that one and a little bit in this brand new one because uh, I'm gonna, I didn't clean this yellow off before I started the video. So I'll need to use this, the, the bright yellow from the new one. Uh, the next thing we'll talk about is brushes, okay? I love to use sumi brushes, which are Japanese or Chinese calligraphy brushes. Um, this is also a nice brush, but I would suggest starting with bigger brushes. This is what came with the set, and this is just a recipe for disaster um, and unsatisfaction, right? It is tiny. Um, you know, you can't get nice broad areas of color with that. It'd take you forever and it'd dry too fast. And one of the biggest things about watercolor is dry time, right? So there's a like a zen process to the drying of watercolor. Sometimes you want to add stuff while it's wet, sometimes you want it to be dry. One of the things that students find so um, unsatisfying about it is that uh, when something bleeds into something else and they lose the detail they wanted, right? So you really have to sort of walk away and let stuff dry a little bit. Um, uh, the other thing is if you don't have brushes at home, Q-tips work great. And Q-tips are great for little ones too because they can use it and then you can toss it and get a new one out. Um, so we're gonna, I'm just going to talk a little bit about paper next. I use watercolor paper, which is made um, specifically for handling lots of water media on it, right? Um, you may remember if you're a parent or if you're a kid watching this, you may have had an experience where you painted on paper and it buckled, right, or got really wrinkly. Um, that happens because it's just too much water, right? But you can always flatten them out by spritzing the backside with a little spray bottle and putting it under something heavy, right? So to start out painting, what we're gonna do is we are going to spritz our watercolors, okay? We're gonna get them, because you want it to be nice and sort of gooey, right? And then um, we want some nice clean containers of water, have our brushes out, and I have a piece of copy paper here. This is my copy paper, it's thin. A piece of cardstock, copier paper, and then a piece of a, a manila um, folder and uh, these are really great to use if you have some of these lying around the house. It's thicker, it doesn't buckle as easily, and um, a lot of people don't use them anymore for folders. So um, I just uh, have some examples where I painted some purple on each one of these to see how the how it would hold it. And this one poked through really easily, right? Because that, that just is a pretty thin paper. The cardstock worked pretty well, and then the uh, manila folder worked pretty well too. Um, so we're going to start out by turning this paper over and we're going to paint basically a rainbow spectrum, right? And you may remember from school, you learn about Roy G. Biv, right? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, right? And that is the light spectrum of color. So we're going to do that spectrum right here. And, um, I'm going to start with red because, uh, you can... You can create, um, and this paper is not going to handle it as nicely as the example I'm going to show you that I did before. Um, so red, we're not going to put the orange in there yet. We're going to put yellow in first near that near the red, okay? And 
And you can see that these are starting to bleed a little bit, right? They're wet next to each other. You're starting to see some interesting effects happening with that red running into the yellow. I'm gonna paint a little more yellow. And then I'm gonna add some blue up here. You can see that this cardstock is starting to buckle somewhat, but again, I'm just gonna hold it down here with my finger so that it doesn't uh, get too crazy on me. All right, a little bit more blue. Now we're gonna see some of that yellow start to mix into the blue. I'm gonna go back and help it out a little bit, okay? I'm gonna get a little more yellow. And I'm gonna just go in here and paint near the blue so they can start to bleed, okay? All right, I got a little bit down there by the red. I didn't mean to do that, but I'll just put a little more yellow down here. You can really see when they start uh, to mix and make orange, right? The yellow and red make orange together. The blue and yellow start to make a green. You can see that over on the side here. And then so I can get to my indigo violet, I'm gonna put some violet up here at the top. Nice dark color there. And hopefully some of that will blend a little bit down here by my blue. And, um, you know, as a parent, uh, it's helpful to put a little bit of newspaper under what you're painting on so you don't have to worry too much about your surfaces, you know. Um, I usually would put my kids on the kitchen floor because that was usually a floor that was uh, not carpeted or I didn't have to worry too much about. Um, I also tell when I teach kids... All right, so this is kind of cool. Let me just go on to this. This is kind of cool where that's starting to mix in together. Um, and let me just go back to here. Then I'll grab my example and show you uh, on the watercolor paper what it looks like. So the watercolor paper holds the color and the water a little bit more. Um, but you can see that they're both um, interesting examples. The watercolor paper, it's blended a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to go back here to the watercolor paper and just run you again run again through the red orange yellow green blue indigo and violet where those start to mix okay so the next part of our project is um we're going to use a piece of black construction paper okay about the the same width of our watercolor paper and we're going to draw on that we'll we'll draw cut it about the same size as our um watercolor paper And then use a pencil to draw a little scene, okay? And what I did before was I drew a little scene of a silhouette of a barn with a little house and a tree, okay? And when we put that against that, um, when it's dry, I'll glue it on here and I've got a little sunset scene. And, uh, you know, if you want to see through your house a little bit, you can go back and cut. I am gonna, I want a little bit of space, something interesting happening in my tree. So I'm gonna use my paper cutter and just cut some little circles out there. Not my paper cutter, sorry, my paper punch. Cut some little circles out so that you'll be able to see that sunset through there. Oh yeah, I like that better. Okay. And that's our project.